going to uh, open this uh, workshop and I would entertain a motion to adopt the uh, agenda. Motion approved. Second. We have a motion to second discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Okay. Now we're official. Now we're official. Good morning. It's afternoon, I guess it is. How are you? Good to see you. Hey, how are you? We don't know what the price might be, but that is something that we may be talking to you all further about. Uh, not necessarily to keep the building, but possibly to expand the parking in this area. But just something for you to look at right there for the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, just hold right here because I want to tell them about a project that's going on within the next week. As you recall, we talked about this area, this area several times over the past probably couple years. Um, the intent is to help improve the traffic pattern in this area to make it a little bit more safe right a little bit more intuitive and at the same time open up some more green space in here so as part of our uh, fiscal year 19 resurfacing contract we're actually going to take out that section of Bayshore over in here all the traffic will continue down college to this uh, uh, stop sign right here and then you'd have the opportunity to turn left turn right go straight do all the normal movements that you would have over there <laughs> We're doing a bridge, um, and uh, you may recall that this bridge is substantially undersized. Um, it, right now, and it's got two culverts that are predominantly filled with sediment, and we had uh, submitted an application to the state and received some state stormwater fund money. Um, to make those improvements and so um, design on the progress on the project has proceeded we are looking at um, a bridge structure um, and it's going to be a probably precast uh, we have um, modified our initial permit application that's underway and I think design is nearing completion so we should be able to give you um, a much better update on the start of construction as we start the CIP process trying to get that bus tour in. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I, I know. Did I? Yeah, I, 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 I had a manager. He does a great job with uh, this project and several other projects. Also, we have the superintendent of the project who's Chuck. And uh, so they're going to walk you through a little bit of uh, terrain here, so be careful as you go in. So, gentlemen. This is Chuck Templeton. He's superintendent of our new educational building and be glad to give everybody a guided tour. If you have any questions, please address them to Chuck. All right, y'all, uh, come on in. Uh, just on be in. careful, there is a little bit of rainwater in here. So what's still to go on the outside? We're working our way this way. 
as soon as the vapor barrier gets completed, we have our, our sample boards done, then we'll get it. All right, so we're at Jacksonville Marina. We can either get off or, and look around, or we can stay on. It's completely up to you. Um, you can see that we have concrete. Actually, it was just poured today for the vent underneath the fixed boardwalk over here on the left side that runs along the side of the building and along the river face. Um, above that, there will be a fixed boardwalk with composite decking. And then over here on the right side of the, the dock that you see going out. Um, uh, but we're re realistically, we're probably looking um, sometime, and that was not indicative of what we actually found. Um, when they're trying to drive the piles, they actually found what looked to be granite rock that you find along the railroad trestle. So, as you can imagine, trying to drive piles into that was. Eight quarts have also been done. Looks just the same great. way. And, you know, needed upgrade to the quartz. They look great. They're USTA certified now. So uh, we're very proud of them. And our public, obviously, is very happy with uh, what we've done here. The red markings this, are for pickleball? The red markings are for all of the vacant property from the heads to the street. That's not actually the case. We have an easement for roughly half of that width from a Mr. Rich and his family, and from Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Currently, the city attorney is in discussions with the Rich family about possibly swapping some land. What the concept would be is that if you look into the old water plant site, the concept would be to take it from the tree line back 40 or 50 feet so they could have a buildable lot. In exchange for that, they would then deed all of the property that currently the city uses but technically does not belong to us. Now in fairness, there's not much that either the Jones or the Rich family can do with the property because of the pipes that we have easements on. But John has been working and I would think probably in the next 30 to 60 days we'll be bringing a legal matter to discuss uh, something relative to this property, just so you'll know. What we believe we need to do is to remove some of the trees, and I'll show you that at the next intersection. So, Anthony, now we're having difficulty with the lift. So if we were to take just the corner trees out, not all the trees, just the corner trees out, you would then have the crate myrtles able to really become the focal point at each of the corners, and that would give you a little bit. You can see, you see that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I tell you, those daggers. Uh, away from the concrete. So that's something that we're going to start doing is cutting the roots <laughs> where they join the brick. As you can see, the county it's complex is coming along beautifully. Uh, I don't know a completion date. I would say it's probably still about three months away from being occupied. But if you look to the left, what we want to remind you of. The county owns this parking lot to the left. They also own the Pelletier House. It was deeded from the Historical Society then, what, four years ago, Glenn? About that time. About four years ago. Also, the county owns the next parking lot, and then the city owns the far parking lot. Do you keep it parking? Do you turn it into a beautiful park in front of this fabulous building the county's built? Do you try to turn it over to restaurants or some type of commercial waterfront? So we can build the tax base. But these are discussions that we need to begin to have with the county again 
now that we're this close to having the new courthouse finished. Found out to a land grant or something, we couldn't disturb and run off the way that You're going to be looking at the Onslow Inn property. As you recall, that has been off the tax rolls and in city ownership for, let's say, 15 years. Mm -hmm. At a point in the next several months, we're going to be bringing you a workshop item to ask you to give us direction on what you want to do with it. In the short term, we're currently getting a contract to come in and take out the majority of the undergrowth in the wetland area. That way you can open up the vista from the upland to the water. Now, the key is, at some point, you're going to have to decide how much longer do you want this left vacant, what city opportunities may be there, or do you want to try to market it again and put it back on the tax roll? side here, work continues to progress on the park and ride lot. Um, further towards the right, not necessarily in front, but towards the right, you can see that we've also got folks that are using the park and ride lot these days. Uh, we're very proud of how that turned out. Uh, the parking lot is very intuitive in the way that it's arranged. Uh, it's very environmentally sensitive in the way that it drains water, etc. And we were also able to keep some very nice mature trees over there in the median. The intent here, of course, was to build a very nice parking facility for Jacksonville Transit as well as the Recreation Center as a whole. But one of the, the fringe benefits that we got from this project is now that the Recreation Center has two points of ingress and egress. We feel it's very important for safety and emergency response purposes. And we were also able to reinforce an area over here at the corner of the park and ride lot so that we can have direct access for ambulances, fire, EMS, etc. to get from the park and ride lot over to all of our softball courts. Found their way over to the recreation center, so pickleball and other things were happening as planned. Um, there's some signage out here, but we feel over the next couple of days folks are going to figure everything out and you know, traffic will be back to normal. Amphitheater, if you would like to get off the bus and go look at it a second, we're encouraged to do so. We were approached by Marine Chevrolet that they needed to expand or they were going to be required to move. So we sold them roughly two acres of land that we never would have used for roughly $338,000. Part of the agreement was that they had to have a stormwater pond. So we said, we'll let you build a stormwater pond on our property, but you have to build it larger than you would be required so that it becomes an amenity. So everything that's here other than the phenomenal work that Michael and his crew and Alan Baker and his crew and others have done, we do not have a single city dollar in this so far. Uh, we're down to about the last 20,000. We hope that what will be, uh, that money will go to will be the two fountains that will go in the retention area itself. A couple of weeks ago, and Ron has the article there, I think it was maybe a week or two ago, Last we, week had, uh, yeah, we had Disney Under the Stars out here 
And Michael, I think you said there were over 500 people. inches and then we would put in uh, like a 57 stone and tamp it down uh, maybe four inches of that and then we would start with the base which of course the base is always going to be the most important for your pavers we would just put the base down we do have uh, pegs in them to keep them anchored we also glued them but these top pieces 